Today I'm going to show you how to make a portable computer for $200 that can be plugged into the wall, the car, or into a standard USB battery pack. First off, you're going to need a rear view camera screen. This is a screen for a rear view camera in a car that you would use to see behind you. We're going to wire this up so that it will work with the computer as a monitor. Next you'll want the Raspberry Pi mini computer. This is a $35 computer the size of a credit card. I've also installed a wireless USB adapter so that I can connect to Wi-Fi. While it has an Ethernet connection, Wi-Fi is the most convenient way to go. Next, you'll want a mini keyboard and trackpad. This will allow you to interact with the computer just as you would with any other keyboard and trackpad. Just in a smaller package and it runs off of a rechargeable battery and is wireless. Next, you'll want one of these transformers. This is a variable transformer. You set the output voltage and it will convert to that voltage whether it has to step up or step down. We will use this to help power the screen. We will cover on how to hook this up for this particular application later. Next, you'll want a standard AV cable. This is similar to one that you would find to hook up a DVD player or a video game system or something of the like. Next, you'll want a standard USB car charger. It, it needs to have two ports on it and it needs to put out um, one, at least one amp of power. It can be more, however the minimum is one amp. Next you'll want a USB wall charger with two ports. Once again you have the one amp minimum. Next you'll want a standard USB battery pack. This as well has the one amp minimum restriction. Then you'll want a standard micro USB cable. And this is similar to what you would find for an Android phone or for some Windows phones. Then you'll want just another USB cable, doesn't matter what type. I, I suggest using an old one because we're going to cut the other end off in order to use this. All right, and now we move on to assembly. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to set up the Pi. First off, you'll want to start off with a basic SD card, similar to what you would find in your camera. You want to insert it with the gold connectors on the underside of the Pi. You'll then want to download the operating system and install it there. I will provide a link in the description. Um, that will take you to a tutorial on how to do that. Next you'll want to take the receiver from the com built-in compartment of the keyboard. You'll want to take out this little wireless dongle. That will be inserted into one of the USB ports. If you purchased a wireless adapter, you'll want to connect it, turn on the Pi, and set up the adapter. I'll also provide a link to it as well. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to hook up the transformer. I've already taken the liberty of hooking up the transformer here, however it's pretty straightforward on how to do it. So, as you can see here, you have these basic screw terminals. Essentially what these allow for is there's a screw down in there that upon loosening it, you stick the wire in, then tighten it back up, and it holds the wire in there. This makes for an easy way to connect wires. So first off, you're going to want to take an, an old USB cable. Well, it could be a new one, but I'd recommend an old one since we're going to cut it. And you'll want to cut the connector off of it. Not the end that goes into the battery or the, you know, charger, but cut off the end that has the other connector on it. And you'll see, and once you peel back this shielding right here, you'll see that there are four colors of wires. Red, black, green, and white. You can just forget about the green and white ones. Those are for data. We're not going to use those. However, the red is positive power and the black is negative power. And so you're going to want to take the red and connect it to your N positive on the transformer. Once again, to connect something, you simply loosen the screw, insert the wire, and then close it back. Of course, you'll want to use a pair of wire strippers to strip back the wire so you'll have the bare wire end that goes into the screw. Then you'll want to take your negative terminal. And of course, you're doing all this 
without power connected. Granted, it will not hurt you, however, you could short something out and possibly fry your transformer. So, you want to take the negative in and do the same thing by inserting it into the terminal. Then, you want to take a multimeter, just a standard multimeter. You want to stick the positive probe in the positive output and the negative probe in the negative output. Then, use, using a screwdriver, well first you want to power it, then using a screwdriver, a little mini screwdriver, just this screw you see right here. That screw will allow you to set the output voltage. Turn the screw in whatever direction is appropriate till the multimeter reads 12 volts. And I will also put a, a link to a tutorial in the description that will show you how to use a multimeter to measure volts. And once again, you want to set this to DC volts. So once that's complete and you set your output voltage, you want to take the wire that came with the screen, the one that has this barrel jack on the end of it. Then you want to, it, it has the two wires on the other end, the red for positive and the black for negative. You then want to take the red wire, connect it to the positive terminal, and take the black wire and connect it to the negative terminal. And there you've just hooked up your transformer. You can plug it into your screen in the red connector and test it out. Granted, with this screen, you do have to have a video source coming in for it to turn on. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to set it up. You'll want to use this process anytime you set it up, and you'll want to do the opposite whenever you take it down. First, we start off with our screen that we discussed earlier. You'll see there are three connectors on the end of the cable. One is AV1, that's this yellow one. AV2, which is this white one, and the red one is power. AV2 will override anything that is displaying on AV1 so long as it has a signal. So you'll want to set your screen up in a position that is convenient for you. Next you'll take your Pi. You'll want to set your Pi in whatever position will work best. You'll want to set it somewhere where it will be secure so that way it won't fall off and hit the floor and break. Next, you want to take your AV cable. First connect one line, one end, into the Pi. Then you'll want to take the other end and connect it to the AV1, or AV2 for that matter, connector on the screen. Now this screen cable is a little bit longer, however I have left the wire tie on there so there's not quite as much cable clutter. It helps reduce the length. Next, we're going to go ahead and connect our power. You'll want to take the transformer that we wired up earlier. You'll want to set it in a secure position as well. You'll want to take the barrel jack end and connect it to the power connector on the screen. Okay. Then, you'll want to take the USB end and connect it into your power source. For this specific hookup, I'm using the battery. However, the same process will work if you're using the wall adapter or if you're using the car adapter. So you'll want to connect it into one of the ports. Okay. Then, you'll want to take your micro USB cable. This is going to allow power to be supplied to the Pi. So you'll want to take the micro end and insert it to the power connector on the Pi. Then you'll want to take the other end and connect it to your power source. Okay, now all of our wire hookup is done. You'll want to go ahead and supply power to your power source, whether this involves plugging it into the wall or into your car adapter, or whether it involves turning the battery power on. And as you can see here, you can use it just like any other computer. It's got a desktop, you can surf the web, you can play games, do anything you could do on just a regular computer. When you're done, simply shut it down, and then once it is finally shut down, simply unhook it.